Hello, Fellowship Church and friends. Uh, today we're going to talk about how the gospel, as it kind of goes down deep into our heart and life, it gives us a heart and a love. Uh, it grows our heart for those who are lost and who those who haven't yet trusted in Christ. And so this is reason number 14 to rehearse the gospel to ourselves every day. And in the book, uh, Gospel Primer, Milton Vincent writes, The more I rehearse and exult in gospel truths, the more there develops within me a corresponding burden for non-Christians to enter into these blessings. This is also what seems to happen to the Apostle Paul while writing the book of Romans. In Romans 5, Paul exults in his righteous standing before God. So he says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we exult. And then he just kept saying, we exult, we exult. And so he's rejoicing in all these benefits that come from being made right with God, which include, you know, grace and joy in suffering. In chapter 6, Paul speaks of the freedom from sin which Christ has accomplished in the lives of believers freedom which Paul later confesses had not yet become fully realized in his own daily practice. And that's what he talks about in chapter 7. Nonetheless, coming into chapter 8, he recounts the fact that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And that's a verse we've talked about several times already in these devotionals. With increasing flourish, he rehearses numerous gospel themes throughout the length of chapter 8, which some say is like the greatest chapter in the whole Bible. And he climaxes the chapter with a triumphant exclamation Exclamation regarding the endless love of God, which enables Christians to conquer overwhelmingly in all things. So you know it. It says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? But in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So he's just been rejoicing in all that we have in Christ, right? What effect do such gospel meditations have upon Paul? What emotions do they produce in him besides the obvious joy he feels while reciting them? Well, listen to the beginning of Romans 9 where he says, this is right after he just said, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Right after that, he says, I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. So why, after just celebrating how we're not separated from the love of Christ because we're in Jesus, why does he have great sorrow in his heart? Verse three of chapter nine, for I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So he's talking about Israelites who have not trusted in Christ yet, um, and who have not believed in Jesus, who have not received the gospel, and he's saying he has anguish in his heart, and he could wish, if possible, which it's not possible, that he himself could go to hell so that they could go to heaven. So Vincent writes, coming down from the heights of gospel meditation, Paul's heart is devastated by a burden for his fellow Jews to experience the saving power of the gospel. His burden existed long before he started writing, but it, it, un, it is undoubtedly intensified by his rehearsal of gospel truths in Romans 5 through 8, a rehearsal which inevitably leads his thoughts towards the plight of those outside of Christ. And so one of the, one of the products of enjoying Jesus and rejoicing in all the, that we, all the goodness that we have in him and in the gospel is that we will long for others to experience it. It will break our heart when we think about family members and friends and even enemies who are outside of Christ. And we will pray and we will long uh, for them uh, to know Christ. And listen to what Paul writes in Romans 10, verse 1. He says, Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. And so may that be our heart's desire and prayer for those around us um, as we enjoy Jesus, that we would pray that they would be saved as well.
Okay, so this is the Friday devotion. Uh, I know uh, many of you are going to be coming to one of the in-person worship services on Sunday. If you haven't signed up, you can still do that. There's some spots available. Go to our website and you can click through to the form to reserve your spot. I know many of you will be staying home and we'll be uh, recording the service and putting that online by Sunday at 10 a.m. And uh, let's continue to pray for each other and let's continue to uh, care for each other. All right. Love you, church.